Hey guys, welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, series and parallel circuits. Now, there is some incredibly complicated math that goes along with these two. And in order to kind of make things go a little faster, we're only going to hit the concepts covered. And what we'll do is we'll worry about the math when we get to class. So you are going to have some stuff skipping over in your notes. So don't worry about if some of the things aren't covered. Anything involving math I'm not going to talk about tonight. It's just going to be a lot easier to hit it in class when you guys are with us. So let's talk about circuits just in general. Um, most importantly, circuits provide a path for electricity to travel. In other words, if we look over here, we kind of have our battery. kind of makes up the bulk of the, the circuit. And we know that our electrons are coming out of here. They're eventually making it to our light bulb right here, which is going to cause our light bulb to light up and then our electrons make it back into the battery and this cycle can repeat itself over and over again. Um, electrons need this. They're not going to make it from the battery to the light bulb without it, you know, unfortunately. So um, if the entire path isn't there, then electrons won't flow and your light bulb will not light up. So incredibly important that we have a voltage source and we have a path for our electrons to travel. And if we have that, it's called a circuit. Circuits can be classified as either open or closed. And really, I mean, it comes down to a very basic thing here. So if we look at this circuit, um, we can see that if we start off right here from the battery, electrons coming out, well, they hit this switch. And we notice that here, the switch is up, which means my electrons can't make it across here. So this is what we call an open circuit. Well, in an open circuit, we don't have any current because the path isn't complete. If we look at this guy here, our electrons come out, they make it to here, and they can, can continue, light up your light bulb, and eventually make it back to the battery, and this is our closed circuit. So switches can create an open or closed circuit, but when we're drawing them, it's really important that we always have a closed circuit for those electrons to flow. Now. We're going to start drawing these diagrams, and um, this is what it could look like. Or it could look like something like this down here. These are incredibly complicated drawings. So what we've done, or not necessarily us, but scientists have come up with ways, symbols to use to kind of help us uh, differentiate between different circuits. These are the basic symbols you're going to be using. Um, this symbol right here is going to represent um, a battery, and it can just be something like this. It's that easy. Um, this is a switch right here. So if you want to say that your circuit can be turned on and off, that's what you'll add. That will represent a resistor. And then this guy right here represents a light bulb. Um, so those are your four main symbols. And then, of course, you connect those all with you know a wire. It's pretty simple. So if I just drew that, that is uh, a circuit with a battery here and then a resistor here. So it's a, as basic as it gets. So why don't you guys go ahead and take some time to practice these two problems. Uh, so go ahead and pause it now and try these real quick. All right, now that you've paused it, let's see what we've come up with. It says a circuit with one resistor, one battery, and one switch. Now, it can look a number of different ways. Your switch doesn't have to be on the exact same path that mine's on. In other words, you could have had a switch here, you could have had your resistor here, you could have had your switch up here by your resistor. But the most important thing is we have a nice continuous pathway. A circuit with two resistors, three batteries, and one switch. So this gets a little more confusing. Now the important thing here is that every time I draw a battery, okay, I connect a small end of the terminal to the large end. In other words, positive to negative. I'm going to throw my switch on the side again two resistors and then that's my circuit okay now technically I drew it open and I drew it open up here too so if you wanted to close it just make sure you draw it like that okay now circuits can look two very different ways and I'm gonna actually spend a good bit of time on this slide because it's really really important and if you walk away with a pretty good understanding of these couple concepts I'm gonna introduce pretty much met the goal for tonight so, um, circuits can be what we call series, or circuits can be parallel. 
And uh, although they may not look very different in these drawings, they're incredibly, incredibly different. So let's take a look at the series circuit first. So let's say our electrons come out of this end of the battery. They hit light bulb number one. They then go and hit light bulb number two. And then they hit light bulb number three and eventually return back. In other words, every electron that comes out of these batteries comes and goes through all of these series, all of these light bulbs or resistors. So what you can see here is that there is only one path for my electrons. Whereas if we go over here, all of a sudden my path branches. My electrons can go here. They can go this way or they can go this way. This is three separate paths in this one right here. And it's because these light bulbs are parallel to one another and these light bulbs go series, in other words back to back to back. What this does is all of a sudden creates a very very different mathematical set and we'll try to introduce those here in a second. So understand that in series circuits okay, electrons have one path and in parallel circuits electrons have multiple pathways, specifically three in this picture. So series circuits, like I was saying, current has one path. All the electrons have to go through. So if we start here, they have to go through all of these and the switch and then return to the battery here. That means if one of these light bulbs goes out, okay, whether it be the first, middle, or the last one in this series, then your entire series circuit is now broken. Okay. In other words, if you remove a light bulb or one goes out, they all go out. Um, resistance can change at different points on a series circuit and the reason for that is because your light bulbs have different resistances in other words they don't all have to be the same so current stays the same but resistance can change in a series circuit we'll talk a little bit more about series circuits here if we look at current in series now this is where we're going to get a little bit of math, but I'm going to try to avoid using it, okay? Current is the same at all points. In other words, if we go back to Ohm's law, which is V equals I times R, right? If we wanted to calculate current, we could easily do that. I find the voltage, and I find the resistance, and then I'd get a current, or I, measured in amperes. And it doesn't matter if I ask you the current at this point, this point, or this point on my series circuit because we know that every single electron had to take this same path so there should be no difference in the current no matter where I measure it. Right? Okay. If we look at resistance in a series circuit, we can calculate what we call total resistance or RT. So you see that here, RT. And the reason you can do that is because, well, once again, the electrons all have to take the same path. So we can look at this as a giant resistor, right? So if I wanted to find the total resistance of this circuit right here, it would be 150 ohms plus 100 ohms plus 60 ohms, which comes out to 310 ohms. So that would be our total resistance for this circuit using our total resistance okay I could have a total voltage and calculate a total current which is what we'll work on doing tomorrow and the way I find the total voltage is really simple just kind of adding up however many batteries I have now the one thing that does change in a series circuit is voltage and that kind of makes sense because if you think about it let's say we have 24 volts in other words we have 24 volts or 24 pushing remember your, your battery is the push provided by to the electrons so let's say we have to go and we started off with 24 volts and all of a sudden we hit this 5 ohm resistor well we know that resistors resist flow so all of a sudden we had 24 volts here but on the other side, right here, my voltage is going to be lower. And when I hit this 3 ohm resistor, it's all of a sudden going to drop again. 
And then finally, when I hit my two ohm resistor, it's going to drop once again. And every time we hit a resistor, this is what we call a voltage drop. Okay? And I will show you how to mathematically find all of that tomorrow, but you need to understand the concept that in a series circuit, if they all have to go through the same resistors, then every time we hit one, we're going to have a voltage drop. Okay? Remember, just come away with some basic concepts and understanding. I'm not asking you to understand it all. We'll skip the sample problems now. We'll hit those tomorrow in class. Let's look at the, the concepts for parallel circuits. Like we were saying earlier, all of a sudden, my electrons have choices. Okay? They can go in any one of these three pathways. So this makes a big difference because all of a sudden, that voltage is going to be the same everywhere. Let's say we have 12 volts coming out of this battery and my electrons go here. Well, they still had 12 volts because this is their original push. And if they chose to travel up this way a little bit more, they still had 12 volts here because this is still the original pathway provided by the battery. So in a parallel circuit, voltage is the same everywhere. This is kind of the opposite of when we looked at a series circuit because we saw current was the same everywhere. But in parallel, voltage is the same. We do not have a voltage drop because they all receive the same push. Now in contrast to that, our current is now going to change. Okay, And this makes logical sense if you begin to think about this. I know this looks a little weird here, but let's let's say uh, our electrons are coming this way so this I didn't really complete this pathway and down here I have a battery okay well if all of a sudden I have these three branches that means my electrons aren't all taking the same path so my current on this branch would be different from my current here which would be different from my current here so each branch has its own current. Remember I is the symbol for current and it's measured in amperes. Now the interesting thing though is let's say I had 16 amps of current going into these, these branches. I should have 16 amps coming out and that 16 amps gets distributed evenly throughout. In other words 8 plus 3 plus 5 is 16. So although my current changes on each branch the total current is still the same. That shouldn't change. Okay, so I know this is complicated, guys. Bear with us. We'll get through it in class tomorrow. Don't worry about the math just yet. Uh, some drawings we'll also do tomorrow. This is really important, though. If you take the time to really look at this, this is kind of your goal for tonight, is to be able to somewhat understand this, that in a series circuit, current's the same everywhere. And that makes sense, because remember, electrons only have one path, okay? Um, in parallel, you've got to calculate your current because remember all of a sudden they have different choices here. In a series circuit we have a voltage drop, but in parallel circuit voltage is the same. They're all getting the same push. In a series circuit we can add up all the resistors to get that total resistance. In a parallel circuit you've got to calculate that and we do that using Ohm's law. A couple of quick last things we'll talk about safety precautions when we're dealing with electricity. You know that this picture right here is just absolutely terrible because plugging in all of these things all of a sudden creates this really high current traveling through the same circuit and this is what results in an overload circuit and you can see kind of the fire coming out of here, kind of an exaggeration, but definitely a potential fire hazard. So we have some precautions and some everyday devices to prevent this. Uh, the first is a fuse, and you see fuses uh, down here, and you may have seen these. These are used in cars a lot. Uh, it's a ribbon of metal, that, and the wire within it melts when there's too much current. In other words, here's what a good fuse looks like. Uh, here's a slightly burnt one, and then here are blown fuses. Um, and these prevent fire hazards from occurring. So fuses are a good thing, and then in contrast to a fuse, we have circuit breakers, and these things you'll see in your house, and we'll talk about those tomorrow. Now, here's the beginning to your extra credit. Okay, you must email your teacher a picture of, and I'll finish that in the next PowerPoint.